Hello and welcome to Better Editor. My name is Chris and today I'm starting part one of a 10 part series on learning Premiere Pro. We're gonna keep things easy today and dive into the Premiere workspace and also look at how to set up a project. If you're ready, let's go. Okay, so here we are. There's a good chance that you know how to open up Premiere. Good job. And what you're looking at now is the home screen. Let's keep things easy and let's just go and start a new project. The first window we see is our project settings. So let's give it a good meaningful name like coffee shop day one. All right, you can change your location to wherever you want it to go. We're gonna ignore the general tab. These settings are default and just fine. What I'm interested in are our scratch disks. Now the scratch disk is where temporary video and audio files are stored for this particular project. These scratch disk settings change from project to project to project. I always like to keep my scratch disk on a separate drive than where I'm editing. So if I'm editing on the D drive, then I'll keep my scratch disk on a Z drive or any other letter name if you're working in Windows or on another volume if you're working on a Mac. Uh, the important thing is that your scratch disk is on something that is reasonably fast. So if I come here, I'll hit browse and I'll point it down to my render drive and go to my scratch disk folder. And this is where I keep my scratch disk for everything. That way I know where all of my temporary files are at any given time. To set that for the rest of these, I'm gonna quickly hit browse and you can hit enter on the keyboard or return on the keyboard if you're on a Mac. And we'll say, okay. And now you're presented with the Premiere window. Yours might not look exactly like this, but it is going to be very similar. We can work through any differences there. So the first thing I wanna look at is the project window. This is where your media is gonna live. This is how we're gonna navigate through our entire project. Up next is our timeline window, which is where all the magic happens. This is where we're actually gonna be editing the video. Beyond that is our source monitor, which is up here. The source monitor is loaded from clips that we select in our project panel. So we double click on a clip, it comes into our source monitor. We can then preview the clip before it goes into our timeline. After it's in our timeline, we can view what is on the timeline and our program window. Up next is our effects panel, and this is where we can sort through and find various effects that we want to apply to clips in our timeline. Pairing off of that is the effect controls panel. So if we have a clip or an audio clip selected down here, we can change the parameters of any of the effects that we put onto it in the effect control panel. And if you look over here, this is our tool panel. These are the various tools that we can use to trim and grab and cut and manipulate the clips that are on our timeline. Now, an important thing to note is that everything that you see in this panel can actually be accessed by using a hotkey or assigning a key to a keyboard key, which will be very useful in becoming quicker and faster and just more efficient. And the last thing I wanna point you to, which isn't open on my windows, so I'll go up to Window and hit Media Browser. And the Media Browser acts like an Explorer window or a Finder window where you can navigate to the various video files and audio files that you'll be using in your project. A nice thing about the Media Browser is that on some types of files, like red footage, if you wanna import it properly into Adobe Premiere, you need to bring it in through the Media Browser so that all of the pertinent metadata that is attached to that file stays attached to that file. If you bring it in through the Finder window or through the Explorer window, it's not gonna work correctly. The last thing that I wanna point out that I have open in my window is this levels meter over here. This is very useful when we're monitoring our audio. It just kind of sits off to the right-hand side. You can put it anywhere you want. I like it over here. Uh, and we'll see what it does once we start digging into the edit. All right. What do you say we start setting up our project? So the first thing that I like to do is add some bins. And I have a bin structure that I like to follow. So I'll stick with sequences. And I like to put a plus on the beginning side of sequences so that it always stays at the top of my project. That's a personal preference. You do whatever you would like. And now we'll add another one. Hit Command B. Make a footage folder. We'll hit another folder. We'll do audio. Another Command B for bin. And graphics, I like to shorten that. But we'll drag these all out here. All right, the next thing that I wanna do is add a Z old folder. And I'll put this in my sequences bin. What I do with the Z old folder is every time that I jump into an edit, 
I duplicate it and I drop the old sequence into old. That might seem a little crazy, but what it does is it creates a very easy backup of all of my sequences. So if I get so far into a new version and I'm like, oh, this looks terrible, I can just come back to an old version, duplicate it and start over. We'll close that and make one more called X working. And this is where I like to keep sequences that I work with, whether it's string outs of interview, string outs of B-roll. This is just where I keep working media. And that looks good to me. The last thing that I want to do before we close out part one of this video series is create a new sequence. So for that, I'll right click and say new item and sequence. You can also do this by hitting control or command N. And now I'm going to create a new sequence. To do that, I'll go into settings and I'll grab custom and I'll show you why in a second. I'll grab a custom editing mode, make my time base 23976. My frame size is 1920 by 1080 or HD. Everything else in here can stay the same. And then I'm going to make sure my preview file format is QuickTime and my codec is Apple ProRes. Now I have a lot of information on why I have these settings, why I chose these settings, and you can find those in the description at the bottom of the video. Also, if you would like, I have this set of presets available as a download that you can also find at the bottom of this video. So for that, I will stick with ProRes 1920 by 1080 2398 and say, and for the new sequence, we are going to call this Coffee Shop Promo V1. Okay, and I'm going to drag my sequence up to my sequences folder. Okay, so that does it for the first part in this 10 part series. Coming up next, we're going to look at different user settings and preferences that we can change to make our editing a lot easier on us and a lot faster. So please join me for that. And thanks for watching.